We've known for quite some time that cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli and cauliflower are extremely beneficial for our health and can greatly decrease the risk of type 2 diabetes and cancer. However, new findings appear to have confirmed broccoli's superfood status because of the potentially huge impact it can have on our gut lining. In this study, researchers at Penn State found that broccoli contains certain molecules that bind to a receptor that helps to protect the lining of the small intestine which in turn inhibits the development of disease. Now the research was done on mice and I know animal testing for a lot of us is extremely distressing and we will address this at the end of the video. One of the study authors commented, we all know that broccoli is good for us, but why? What happens in the body when we eat broccoli? Our research is helping to uncover the mechanisms for how broccoli and other foods benefit health in mice and likely humans as well. It provides strong evidence that cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli, cabbage and Brussels sprouts should be part of a normal healthy diet. Now the wall of our small intestine allows beneficial nutrients and water to pass into our body but stops food particles and bacteria that could cause harm from getting in. We have certain cells that line our intestine. Enterocytes are cells that absorb water and nutrients. Goblet cells secrete a protective layer of mucus on our intestinal wall. And panath cells, which secrete lysosomes that contain digestive enzymes, which all help to control this activity and maintain a healthy balance. The researchers found that molecules in broccoli called aryl hydrocarbon receptor ligands bind to a particular receptor called AHR and in doing so initiate a variety of activities that affect the functions of our intestinal cells. The scientists fed an experimental group of mice a diet containing 15% broccoli, which equates to roughly three and a half cups per day for humans. And they also fed a control group of mice a typical lab diet that did not contain broccoli. They then analysed the animal's tissues to determine the extent to which that receptor, AHR, was activated, as well as the quantities of lots of different cell types and mucus concentrations, among other factors, in both the groups. And they found that mice that were not fed broccoli lacked the receptor activity, which caused changes in intestinal barrier function, reduced transit time of food in the small intestine, decreased number of goblet cells and protective mucus, decreased panath cells and lysosome production, and decreased the number of enterocyte cells. Quote, the gut health of the mice that were not fed broccoli was compromised in a variety of ways that are known to be associated with disease. Our research suggests that broccoli and likely other foods can be used as natural sources of AHR ligands and that diets rich in these ligands contribute to resilience of the small intestine. So obviously now we need a randomised placebo controlled study conducted in humans before we get carried away. But this is an extremely promising start. But I understand for many of us, testing on animals can be very difficult and conflicting. But there are some amazing animal-free research organisations that are supporting cutting-edge animal-free research methodologies, which will result in significant advances for more human-relevant medical research, benefiting the public health and reducing animal suffering. One of which is the charity Animal Free Research UK. Links will be in the description to find out more about them, and also if you'd like to donate to their cause. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe for more upcoming videos.